Hello, one and all, and welcome to the very first episode of the Chip Tide Show. That's right, the very first. Yeah, click the uh, card if you're confused. And seeing as this is the first episode, I couldn't just talk about any old game, no. I had to start with the very best game, because that way we can only go downhill f from here, wait. That's right, I'm making the claim Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii is the best video game of all time. It's a perfect game with zero flaws. And I can prove it in today's episode of the Chip Tide Show. a couple of hours ago and I gotta tell you guys I can see why Mario wanted to have an adventure up here because it is truly spectacular. We've got plenty of oxygen, fuel is looking good, we got some sandwiches in case we're hungry, and my assistant Richard is uh, just informing me that our engines and radio have both seemingly died and we are now adrift in the cold dead vacuum of space with uh, with no way of ever returning or even contacting home? What? Uh, okay, okay, that's fine. That's, we'll, uh, we'll come up with a solution, I'm sure. We'll, we'll fix this. Uh, in the meantime, we just keep rolling with the episode, Richard? I, there's nothing else to be done? Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's get back into Mario Galaxy. You, uh, toss me one of those sandwiches just to kind of, you know, keep my mind occupied. What do you mean you forgot the sandwiches? No, it's not my job. It's the host's job to bring the sandwiches. Not the assistant's job. That's You're the production assistant. The food is the first thing in your contract. God, I... Oh. So, not only is Super Mario Galaxy the best game ever made, it is also a super important game to me, personally. Way back in the good old days of 2007, this was the first game that my brother and I ever bought with our own money. I don't even really remember how we heard about it, but we knew we wanted it, and so we saved up our allowance for months until we were able to get it. And once we got it, we instantly fell in love. Then we briefly got stuck on this one part with this little uh, sling star guy because we were too dumb and didn't read the directions, and then we cried and regretted every decision we ever made, and then like 10 minutes later, we figured it out and fell right back in love. We collected nearly every star in the game over the next two months, with the exception of a few tricky purple coin stars and that damned Bouldergeist Daredevil run. And since then, I have completed this game 100% literally more times than I can remember. For that reason, it's a fool's errand for me to try to articulate exactly what it is about this game that I love so much. Besides, uh, I don't know. Nostalgia? But lucky for you, I'm a fool, so let's do it. On the off chance you haven't played Super Mario Galaxy before, well, it, it's Mario in the galaxy. Normally I'd just tell you to go get the game and play it if you want to know what the story is and whatnot, but in the case of Super Mario Galaxy, you can't. Yep, while it's true that Mario Galaxy was recently ported over to the Nintendo Switch alongside Mario 64 and Sunshine, Nintendo made the baffling decision to not endlessly profit off of people's nostalgia, instead opting to make the game a limited time release only. So, if you want to pay Nintendo money to play one of their old games, tough luck, have fun with the scalpers, man. Oh, what? They ported Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy over to the Switch? How did I hear about this? Oh, let me pop into the eShop real quick and check this out. Oh, oh uh, hi, uh, excuse me, Mr. Nintendo? Yeah, I'd like to buy one copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, please. Nah, no? Oh, oh. <laughs> my, my apologies, my apologies. Uh, let's see, yeah, uh, 60 US dollars in exchange for the game. Uh, <laughs> what is that for? It's 
it's money in exchange for the game. You know, exchange of goods and services, basics of modern economics. Oh, 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 uh, it's not for sale. What do you mean it's not for sale? I, you got it right there. I do, I do have it right here, don't I? Yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy, man. You can't have it though. Why not? I want the game, you want my money. It seems like everybody wins here. All right, look kid, you think we can print these things for free? Nah, nah, that's not how it works, all right? Uh, cartridges, packaging, the instruction manual that literally nobody reads, shipping, stuff ain't free, kid, all right? We just can't keep printing it again because you missed the boat the first time around, all right? Sorry. It's a digital game. Just send me the code and you can have my $60. I'm giving it to you. Nope, not gonna happen. I, 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 you know, I, 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 no, no. No, get up, get the... Man, man, you know what? Fine. I don't need the game from you anyway. Let's see here. Super Mario Galaxy ROM. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Man, I just want to play the game. Hey, hey what, what are you doing? What are you doing? You want to play the game, kid? Go buy a Wii. Oh, all right, all right. Can I buy a Wii from you then? <laughs> what? What year do you think it is? 2008? Dream on, kid. All that is a very long-winded way of saying, fine, I'll explain the story to you. The game opens on the night of the Star Festival, which is a wonderful night of shooting stars, parties, and oh no, Bowser showed up to kidnap the princess. Who could have ever uh, foreseen such a thing occurring at this event? I'm not sure why, but Bowser's got an unreasonable amount of swagger in this game. Like, sure, rolling up in the cleanest white suit I have ever seen and shredding Mario's cap in the propeller of your airship is pretty baller. But here, he rolls right up to the castle's front door with a fleet of airships raining down cannon fire and leaving flames and destruction in his wake before conjuring a massive lightning storm above the castle with his bare hands, which reveals a literal UFO which has never been seen before and will never show up for the rest of the game that lasers the castle out of the ground and then is then carried into space with Peach, Mario, and everyone else still inside of it. They're carried up into the stratosphere. Say what you will about the guy, but he knows how to make an entrance. But as cinematic as this opening is, I gotta make a confession. I couldn't care less about Peach. If you're still falling for the same kidnapping shtick after 25 years, I really can't help you. Bowser, you can just go nuts. But what I can't forgive is his treatment of the toads. If there is one thing you will learn about me, it's that I freaking love the toads. They are the purest species known to man. There is not an evil spore in their body. They are a humble, peaceful people, and Bowser has no right to rain meteors down in their parade. Princess be damned, today, I fight for the toads. So after getting blasted off into space Team Rocket style, Mario ends up on a small grassy planet where he plays hide and seek with a few star creatures called Lumas, and eventually he meets their space mama, Rosalina. Now, surprisingly, her backstory is actually a little too complicated to get into here, but simplifying it, she's basically equal parts immortal space god and an allegory for growing up and drifting away from your friends and family and looking back on cherished memories from your childhood that you can reflect on but never truly return to. All themes that completely flew over my head as a kid, but now that I'm at a stage in my life where I'm metaphorically and quite literally drifting away from innocence into the cold, unfeeling void that is modern society, now instill within me equal parts nostalgia and existential dread and uh uh yeah you know you uh you gotta uh you know you gotta get to the end and you gotta save uh you gotta save peach from the the big bad the turtle the music still slaps though if the opening cutscene that puts Endgame to shame in terms of dramatics didn't clue you in already, this game goes pretty freaking hard in the presentation department, and the music is no exception. 
gone are the bits and boops of Mario games past. The only true way to capture the majesty of the universe is with a fully orchestrated soundtrack. You ever wonder what it would sound like if a Mario game sounded like frickin' Lord of the Rings? Well, let me introduce you to the Gusty Gardens Galaxy. The opening theme, Good Egg Galaxy, and of course Gusty Gardens are all tracks so famous that I can guarantee you know them even if you don't know that you know them. But who could forget the heart-pounding battle hymn of the Bowie Base Galaxy, the Bowser boss themes that sound like frickin' Duel of the Fates, the serenity of space fantasy, or the absolute tearjerker that is the Space Junk Galaxy. This soundtrack never stops never stopping, and I can't get enough of it. I briefly touched on them earlier, but this game has some of the weirdest and coolest characters I've ever seen in a Mario game. Of course you got Rosalina and the Lumas, but who could forget those super chill surfer penguins? The gear dudes that win the prize for funnest head to jump on? The queen bee that... that... uh... you know what, let's, let's forget about her. But of course, who could forget everyone's favorite, the lovable coward, the Nintendo icon, the character so famous that Nintendo was forced to give him a game series of his own. What? Get the out of here. I'm talking about Captain Toad and the Toad Brigade. These guys. These guys. I said earlier that I love the Toads, and these boys are the creme de la creme of the whole freaking species. And they aren't just some cookie cutter characters either. All the major personality types are here. We got the one who wears glasses, the one who sleeps a lot, the old prospector, the mailman, and of course the good captain himself, the brave leader of the Toad Brigade who always just so happens to be a safe distance away from the action and the danger. A coincidence no doubt. Screw Zodiac signs. What member of the Toad Brigade are you? Tweet them at me with the hashtag Toadiac on Twitter. I'm definitely a purple toad. Chris Pratt in the Mario movie? Nah, give me a Goonie-style show starring the Toad Brigade. I guarantee you it'll make millions because I will see it about a million times. They're genuinely funny and helpful. They show up Everywhere, I tell ya, there is nothing better than the feeling of traveling on your own through the endless hostile void of space only to come across one of these guys chilling in a box or a crystal or a coconut or something. Really, they're just, they pop up everywhere with a bit of helpful advice or a good joke to keep your spirits up. Man, what I wouldn't give to see one of their star streams swoop down and save me from my celestial prison right about now. Right about now. No, no, still not. Still nothing? Okay, I thought that would work. I'm now realizing that I somehow managed to get four pages into a script about a video game without ever talking about the gameplay. But does that make me bad at my job? <laughs> yeah, right. It's a Mario game. You all know the drill by this point. You got a bunch of different worlds, or domes they're called in this one, and each dome has a couple of levels in it. In order to access these levels, you gotta run around the game's hub, the Comet Observatory. Now, apparently, the inclusion of the observatory was a contentious one, because in Super Mario Galaxy 2, they got rid of it completely, and they just let you select levels from a world map. Now, most people agree that this was ultimately a good choice. It makes getting from level to level much faster and streamlined, and most people are wrong. The Comet Observatory freaking rules! It's a really fun place to just run around and practice your different jumps, and the song that plays there is an absolute banger. I'm sorry, but if you can't get down with a good space waltz, we can't be friends. It's the perfect game, I'm telling you. The atmosphere there is, well, it's non-existent, but metaphorically, it's dope. A whimsical little home, adrift in space. Yo, they even got couches here? Hey, Richard, why did you pack a couch on our ship? What do you mean you have a couch in your room? You have your own room? Where? I'm gonna go ahead and make the claim that Super Mario Galaxy has some of the most iconic levels in all of Mario, maybe in all of gaming. Even if you haven't played the game because Nintendo refuses to sell it to you, there's a solid chance you at least know about Good Egg, Honey Hive, or Gusty Gardens Galaxy. Those are some of the fan favorites, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the absolute bangers like Beach Bowl, Toy Time, and Sea Slide. Hell, they're all bangers. Seriously, I don't think there's a bad one in the bunch. Like, honestly, thought experiment for those of you who have played the game 
What's the worst galaxy in the game? I don't, hey, hey, uh, I don't know, the deep dark one? And that one's got a ghost ship and a freaking shrinking planet that you can long jump around. That's hype! It's the perfect game! Flawless, I tell you! Flaw- Flawless! The major three-star galaxies are the ones that most people remember, but there's also a ton of one-off galaxies that are super cool. Because you don't spend a whole lot of time and never revisit them, Nintendo decided to get real experimental and churned out some super quirky ones, and I think it paid off. Honestly, Rocky Road, Hurry Scurry, and Buoy Base are some of my favorite levels in the whole game. No! No! Flawless! This game also has some of the coolest and most varied boss fights in the franchise. You won't find any cookie cutter Kooplings here. Oh look, it's Lemmy! Who's that? Bigger Lemmy! Oh, oh, here they come! Even bigger Lemmy and pink even bigger Lemmy! Nah. Instead, you got plant dinosaurs, space wizards, a bug's life mixed with flyboys, some of the most epic Bowser fights I've ever encountered, and a really furry mole. Like a really furry mole. Like they just figured out how to do good looking like fur simulations and they just went absolutely nuts with it. A plus. All that not good enough for you? Well, good news. The Super Mario Galaxy developers didn't know the meaning of the words good enough. Every single major galaxy has at least one comet star associated with it. Basically, when one of these comets is orbiting a galaxy, you'll be able to replay one of the levels with some sort of challenge imposed on it. These range from speedruns to one-hit death challenges, races against Mario's shadow clone, and purple comets that turn the game into Banjo-Kazooie for a second. And I love Banjo-Kazooie! Some of these are actually pretty tough, but none tougher than Beware of Bouldergeist, Daredevil Run. This is easily the hardest boss I have ever fought in a video game. I beat Margit the Fell Omen in Elden Ring on my very first try. It wasn't even that hard, but Bouldergeist? Bouldergeist put my foolish ambitions to rest. Still a perfect game though, still perfect. It was hard, but still perfect. The controls in this game are still buttery smooth nearly 15 years later. Running around spherical planets, triple jumping, long jumping, it all feels great. They also add a little spin, literally, maneuver that you can use to break stuff, stun enemies, fling stuff, and correct your jump a bit in midair, which is super clutch. This game also added a bunch of brand new power-ups that completely changes the way Mario can move. B Mario can fly for a short time and climb on honeycombs. Ice Mario can skate across water and molten hot lava. Eh, not sure that's how ice works, but okay, sure, still perfect game. And I love how all the ghosts are like super attracted to Mario when he's a boo and they get all embarrassed when you look at him. Real fun detail. I've heard a lot of people complain about Spring Mario in the game. I guess people have trouble controlling him. Well, so I guess some people are just bad at video games because you just, you press the button when he compresses to bounce back, like how, a, like how a spring works. Look, I think it's fun, and just look at the official art for Spring Mario. Look at how distressed he looks, like, oh no, look at me, I'm stuck inside a spring. I'm gonna bounce my head and give myself a concussion. Wahoo! And I think that's it. I've touched on every single aspect of Super Mario Galaxy, and I have proven that there is not a single flaw to be found in this game. Story, music, controls, level design, it's all perfect. There is not a single thing wrong with this game. It would be impossible to ever improve on it. It is the perfect game there ever is, was, and ever will be. Whew. Oh, fine, I'll talk about the motion controls. Whew. Right. So, this is an early Wii game, so yes, there are motion controls. In order to use the menu spin move, you gotta shake the Wii Remote. In the original, there was no way to bind to a button, you had to shake it. And the spin move comes up a lot during this game. Mind you, you don't need to wave it around like a crazy person, just a little flick is all. It's just like pressing a button, except instead of your thumb, you move your wrist. Not that bad. But. It doesn't end there. There are a couple of levels in particular, the ray surfing, the ball rolling, and the bubble blowing ones, where you need to use the motion controls more 
extensively to move around in very gimmicky ways. These are somewhat infamous in the community as a cause of Nintendo implementing finicky motion controls in a game where they don't necessarily belong. Now, admittedly, yes, I can see how these levels could be frustrating, but for those of you who struggle with motion controls in games like this, real talk, I have played way too many janky Wii games, so I actually have a tip for you on how to struggle a little bit less with these sections. Get good. I grew up on the Wii, all right? This is my domain. My entire childhood was spent honing my skills with the Wii Remote. My talent is unmatched. I am the king of motion controls, you hear me? Oh, your wrist hurts from twisting it around too much? You fell off the edge because you think the controls aren't responsive enough? Can't relate. In the Switch version, they actually let you use the X button to spin, and you can use the Pro Controller too. If you're a coward, two Joy-Cons is the closest thing to the Wii Remote, so I will wield them as King Arthur wields Excalibur, for it is better that we slay a coward than through a coward we all be slain. Later in the game, you gain access to this three-pointed planet with harder versions of all the motion control galaxies, but where others see a challenge, I see a throne. This is my kingdom, and you're all just playing in it. Bow before me and despair. Pe you know what? You know what? I may have uh, may have gotten a little uh, carried away there. It's just a game where you're rolling around on a ball. Come on, come on, come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. <sighs> you're fine. You're not. You're not cowards. You will not all be slain. The controls aren't that bad, though. You're just not good at them. So there you have it. Categorical, objective proof that Super Mario Galaxy is the perfect game. I've gone through every single inch of it, and I couldn't find a single bad thing here. Well, what's that? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, no. the... Give them the Odyssey. I repeat, oh, come in, Odyssey. The radio! Uh, uh, come in, Houston. This is Odyssey. I repeat, this is Odyssey. I read you loud and clear. Copy, Odyssey. It's <laughs> good to hear you. You received a distress call. Help is on the way. Oh. I repeat. Help oh, is on the way. Oh, they're coming to save us. I don't understand how much second I'm expecting to get you to. A king? A king? You step too far, young man. You do not know your place. But I can show you. I can humble you. Like Icarus, you fly too close to the sun. Oedipus, your hubris will be your undoing. Because you will soon see that a silly little kingdom means nothing to the one who rules.